So sometimes homeschooling in life can be chaotic, but I feel like I'm getting better at rolling with it to a degree. Let's talk about how quarter two went in our homeschool and some ideas for quarter three. Hey guys, welcome back to my Practically Imperfect Life. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name's Abby, homeschooling mom of two. I have a junior and I have a sophomore. And this was a very interesting quarter to wrap up. So we have wrapped up our 18th week of school. In fact, we just wrapped it up last week. And you might say that seems maybe a little bit late because I know a lot of people kind of aim to end quarter two before Christmas break. But we had some unusual breaks that we took due to sports and college tours and all of that stuff. And that's just kind of part of it, right? We just decided we were going to flex and we were going to extend out quarter two until after Christmas break. So how did things go? Well, we're not on the 18th week of curriculum for some of our subjects, that's for sure. But despite the fact that this whole quarter felt like we just weren't like always like right where I thought we were going to be, I am less stressed about that than I have ever been <laughs> any other quarter of our homeschooling time. I just, I don't know what it is. It's like, I finally realized to myself that there are things I can control. There are things I can't control. And that whole saying, let, you know, let me address the things I can. Let me learn to be at peace with the things that I can't. And so what, what did quarter two kind of entail that kind of helped kind of create that whole situation? Well, obviously the holidays, right? We, we only took two weeks off for Christmas. We took the week of Christmas and then the week after. Um, and that was a beautiful break. I needed it. The kids needed it. You know, they're teenagers. They wanted to spend time with friends and, um, and just be able to relax and sleep in and not have to stress about things. My son picked up and worked a ton of hours at his job. So he was really excited with the larger paychecks that came with that. So that made him really happy. Um, we got my daughter set up with um, a new, it's a sports training program that focuses on high school athletes. So she's on top of playing basketball right now and she is doing indoor golf practice. Uh, multiple days a week. She's also going two to three days a week and working specifically with these trainers. Uh, and it's a really cool program. I, I could do a whole video on it, but it's it was a very tailored evaluation based on her strengths and weaknesses related to golf. And so she's working with these trainers to improve on those things before we get to her final high school season. So that you know, has adjusted things a bit. And then it was like illness just descended upon the house. And that was probably the biggest kink because honestly, we just don't get sick. Like we, I, I went years without having so much as a cold and all of us were sick one right after another in November. It was like, boom, boom, boom. As soon as one of us started to feel a little bit better, another one fell and it went through the whole household. And then we were getting ready to start back up after Christmas and I was like, all ready. I was like, yep, we're going to start back in. We're going to do all the things. We're going to do group work. And then I got sick again. And I mean, I was like, could not get off the couch sick. I, I don't know. I don't know. Like two days completely. I just, I barely did anything. And then I kind of gradually started doing things again. And I took a couple days off of my job, which I never do. I never call in sick to work. So it felt really weird to do that, but um, I needed it so badly. And so we didn't do like any group subjects for a whole week. And then we went right into a week where we have a two day basketball tournament that our team hosts and it's a huge event. So we already were gonna have a short week for that. And then we had a college tour. <laughs> and so we haven't actually had like a normal, you know, five day school week where we're doing all of the things yet, but that's okay. So it just was a little bit wonky. So anyways, what I thought I would do was go through just um, a little bit on some subjects. I don't want to run through every single subject and kind of let you guys know what kind of what we did and some things we learned along the way. 
Um, if you're interested in finding out more about specifically like what subjects my kids are doing, how we're putting it on the transcript, what curriculum, all of that stuff, um, down below in the description box, you'll see the link to my curriculum choices playlist and you can see all of that information there. But um, I just wanted to let you know kind of what's been going well and what's not been going well and what things we've had to tweak. Uh, so let's start in the math category. Uh, so both of my kids do Shoreman online math. My son is doing algebra two with integrated geometry. My daughter's doing pre-calculus. No changes from quarter one with regards to the algebra two. My son's still just kind of clicking through it. Pre-calculus continues to give my daughter headaches. And while overall, I would still recommend Shorman. I still think it's a great program. I love the auto grading. I love the way they teach. I like the way you can click on resources and try to find answers. We have had a couple of things we have discovered. And so if you have a child going into this pre-calculus course, hopefully this will help you. First of all, the lessons she's getting into lately, there has been a lot of references to unit circles. So for those who aren't familiar, if you drew a circle on a coordinate plane, you know, you could mark different things, like if you're looking at tangents and cotangents and things like that. And if I've completely lost you, imagine how my poor kid feels. Um, but when you're talking about things in like radians and whatnot, you can have, like depending on the degree of an angle or the cotangent of an angle, you might be looking at like pi over two or two thirds pi and all this stuff on different spots on these unit circles. So unit circles are something that's used in this level of math. So she has found that there's an awful lot of problems that are, you know, asking her to turn things into that type of a measurement using a unit circle, but the problem itself and the lesson resources don't have like a unit circle for her to reference. So what we've taken to doing is actually printing off pictures of unit circles, just putting them up <laughs> for her. And then that way she can have that to reference and not have to look it up every single time. Cause it's almost like they expect her to have it memorized. And she's like, there's no way I'm memorizing this. And I'm like, that would be ridiculous. There's no reason for you to memorize it. So if your student is in pre-calculus and they're kind of getting to that halfway point in the curriculum, highly recommend just printing off some pictures of different unit circles for them to use. That has been very helpful. The other issue that we are having, and I honestly, I need to go back and see if this is an issue that is occurring in the Algebra 2 course, because I don't know. My daughter is the one who brought this to my attention. Um, more than once, she has had a problem where she's called me over and said, look, I've worked out this problem none of the answers it gives us options are correct. And I'll work out the problem and I will find the same thing. None of these answers are correct. Well, yet you have to pick a, an answer, right? So I just had her, you know, select them until it said, hey, this is the right answer. And the, the downside with the way that the program works is I can't see the answer key until she's submitted the assignment for grading. So we have her go through, we had her submit the assignment, and then we get access to a PDF that shows us all of the answers and how to work them out. So we would go to that problem, and sure enough, the answer that they give in the solution doesn't match any of the answers that they gave as options for that problem. So she got the problem wrong because it didn't give her the option to select the right answer. And the first time we did that, I thought, okay, well, that's a fluke. I just made a note of the assignment and the problem. So when I went in to like review the grades, I was accounting for that and like giving that point back. But then it happened again. And then it happened again. And it's happened four different times, <laughs> four different times. And so you, you can submit, you know, this information to Shoreman so they know that, so they can go back and they can correct it. But now it's got me wondering how closely I need to go back and look at previous problems to see like if it was wrong was it really wrong because you know when you when we looked at like how it you know auto graded it said that she had it wrong but then you know again we look at the solution manual and the right problem wasn't there and so now it's got me a little paranoid like I have to go back and check them all because I don't want to give her the incorrect grade for that problem so um, I've submitted a ticket about that with them because I was like that's a little frustrating because the big thing that I really like about this online math is the fact that it's supposed to auto grade and save me from having to do that so that has been a little bit of a frustration to be honest with the math I can't lie Ugh. now English um so my daughter is doing excellence in literature. She's doing the British literature program. And if you aren't familiar with how it's set up, it's nine modules and there is like one main novel that is assigned for that module meant to be done over four weeks. 
And then you have the option to do an honors book as well. So kind of the way they suggest the scheduling is like you start reading the main book and you have a writing assignment the first week, you finish that book the second week and then have another short assignment. And you're supposed to start the honors book week three while you're working on your main essay on the main book. Some modules that's been doable because the books either were a little bit smaller or like we had like plays and things like that. And a couple of times already, it's just not been feasible. Like the main novel's just been so, it's been long or it's been a difficult read and things like that. So she, for example, um, she needed some extra time on module three. Like we gave her an extra week on it to, to finish it up and finish up the paper. And then um, she read King Lear for one module and the honors, the honors book or play was Hamlet, which she'd already done. So we just didn't do the honors one for that one. Well, this module that she just started, the main novel is Paradise Lost. Now, I do not know how many of you have read Paradise Lost. <laughs> it's a uh, one. It's an interesting book, but it's long and it's very wordy and it can take a while to just really grasp everything that's being said in the book. So I just finally, I was like, no, we're not even going to worry about the honors book on that. Um, overall, regardless of whether or not we do the honors book each month, I strongly feel like this course just overall should be counted as an honors course. Because at the bare minimum, you're reading nine classical novels. I mean, these are, these are hard reads. These are reads that really make you think. And she's writing multiple different assignments each month, including a full 750 to thousand word essay every single month. So there should be no reason why we can't count it as honors. Uh, so she is, uh, kind of just, we've just been kind of feeling it out and looking at the no the novels for that. So that's kind of what's going on with that. Now, my son spent most of quarter two reading Fellowship of the Ring. Uh, we were going back and forth. So we use BJU's um, Elements of Literature. This is the one that he's on for them. This is their 10th grade course. Um, it's seven units long. The units really don't take all that long. They take about two to two and a half weeks, sometimes three weeks to complete. Um, we had spent way too long going through unit two because there was a bunch of poetry. Um, but we got finished with that and I wanted to move into novel study. So last year he'd read The Hobbit. So we did The Fellowship of the Ring and that took a long time. Um, but he really enjoyed it. Um, he read the novel, then I had him watch the movie and write a comparison paper. And so when I talk about Q3, we're going to be diving back into that. So, you know, it's okay to take a pause on regular curriculum if you want to add something else in like could I've told him like hey yeah you're going to do this for assigned reading on top of this I could have but I didn't feel like I needed to I felt reading the fellowship of the ring we um had like a study guide that I got off teacher pay teachers so he was answering questions from that he was doing literary analysis pages from that as well so he really got a good dive into that book and um and I'm proud of him for finishing finishing all of it because it's a lengthy book. And Tolkien's another very wordy author, but a lot of fun to read. So that's what we did for English with them. Now my daughter's government econ personal finance course. So that's the big combo course we do from Guest Hollow. Um, that continues to be like hands down. Like that course is just great. Like it's great. If your state requires government and econ, this is the course to do. And if it doesn't, if you would like your child to understand the economy and how things work and you want them to understand the government and how that works, do this course. This course has been fantastic. Um, from the information she's getting in their online textbook to the reading assignments that she's done to the extra videos, it's just been overall great. Um, and there's even like logical thinking worked in there as well. So I've talked, I think the last quarter update, how we're at, going to add in like a half year credit of logic because uh, it has books on fallacies and things like that. And she called me out the other day. <laughs> I said something and she goes, that's this kind of fallacy. And I was like, crap. <laughs> I was like, shoot. All right. Well, now you're smarter than I am. So 
uh, it's, it's it's just it's been really great and she understands things so well and I think by the time she's 18 and voting she will just have a much better I idea and understanding of how all of that's working so fantastic um, my son is working through world history now he's doing a world history course also from guest hollow so again it's a lot of reading and videos and activities and things like that and then the two of them combined are doing the chemistry in the kitchen course uh, which we're kind of focusing on the food science part of it here's where things also got a little wonky so um, my son was working quite a bit and then he got sick and then we just had all of these other things kind of going on and he started to get a little behind on things uh, just wasn't like getting all of the reading selections done or you know I'd go to check and see if he would like finished all of the workbook assignments and he just wasn't like all the way caught up and he's not a, like a speed reader like my daughter and I are pretty much speed readers and he's not and so what we started doing was like okay well we're just we're going to take an extra day and we're going to work on this so we're going to move this to next week and so instead of this this week's lessons taking one week let's spread it out and let's go over two because I liked the material and the things being included enough that I didn't want to like cut more things out I would rather give him more time to do those things and so for example we spent a long time going over like Rome and Roman history and things like that and like Vikings and whatnot because they were subjects that were interesting and the books were interesting he just needed longer to get through them and so we're not on track with like the weeks like the week we are at in school does not track with where we're at on that now does that mean I'm going to like extend our school year out to have him finish it I I haven't decided that yet I don't know if we're going to get to you know where we're done with 36 weeks of school which is what our state requires or like 180 days and just say okay we're going to stop there or if I'm going to extend it out I just don't know uh, we'll see kind of where we're at with things when we get to the end of the third quarter and maybe make a decision at that point um and then with like the the food science the chemistry in the kitchen course it was kind of the same deal except the problem is is that since both my kids were doing the course together it meant that like I had certain materials and things ready for my daughter for the week she was on and then different ones for my son and then with them doing the cooking projects we were like repeating cooking projects for a couple of weeks there and I finally said you know let's just when we came back from Christmas break I told my daughter we were going to take a little pause on her doing the chemistry in the kitchen to give my son a chance to catch up with where she's at and so I think that's probably a good transition into like what we're looking at for quarter three uh, so with regards to that chemistry in the kitchen course so my daughter is going to do like a four week hiatus she's just not going to work on it for four weeks to give my son the chance to catch up and be right where she's at and then they can both continue to move on through that course together at the same time the same pace when we're doing a cooking project they will both do the cooking project they'll do the same one and that will be good it's less for me to have to worry about having on hand and preparing and all of that stuff um, so we're going to do that for for that course so that's just part of the flexibility now that doesn't mean that my daughter's not going to do like any work at all instead what we decided to do was to give her some more time to focus on her SAT prep program so we had purchased an SAT prep program in the fall and um, I do have a video coming up here in a few weeks that's going to talk more about the one we chose and how that one works uh, but she just didn't have a whole lot of time to dedicate to it because she had all of this other stuff for her school so we're giving her basically this time kind of during the school day to spend 20 to 30 minutes going through and doing some of the drills and the technique reviews and things like that just to help her Kind of put some significant time into it because the SITs will be coming up in the spring and that's something that I've got to be getting her registered for here shortly so I just wanted to give her that focused time to be able to work on that and so it actually kind of worked out well my son gets the chance to catch up she gets the chance to work on something else and all things will be good Q3 in English is going to take my son back to doing the BJU curriculum now that we have finished Fellowship of the Ring so right now my plan is to have us go ahead and do units three four and five for sure and I think those three units will probably take us through the majority of quarter three uh, there are seven units in all and I don't know if we will after five if we will do another novel study because I do have a novel study pulled for us to to do but we might just continue on and try to get unit six and seven done or we might 
pause, do a novel study, and then see if we get through unit six and seven. But he's going to be looking at, they, they all have like a main theme, like a big thing they're focusing on. So unit three is illusion and symbols. Unit four is focusing on irony. And then unit five is talking about folk tales and epics. Um, then, I mean, unit six is going to be on essays. And then unit seven is another poetry unit. <laughs> ah! Oh, I'm sorry. There's eight units. Totally forgot about that. Unit eight is a drama and he'll read all of Romeo and Juliet. So... Yeah, so I don't know if we're going to get a second novel study in this year. I was really hoping that we could, and I don't know. Maybe we'll just completely skip that another unit on poetry because I don't think I can survive doing another unit that's solely focused on poetry. I'm not a big poetry fan. My son is not a big poetry fan, and it was, like, painful getting through that other unit. But I think these next three units will go okay. They'll go pretty smoothly. And the flow of how their assignments work, it's something he's just been used to because he's been using their curriculum for so long where there's reading, there's um, like little quizzes just to test and make sure he's done the reading. And then there's worksheets that kind of focus in typically on like what that main point is of that unit. So if we're talking about illusion, for example, for example or irony, like the questions are going to help deepen his understanding of that. So that is what he's going to be doing. I mentioned uh, my daughter's reading Paradise Lost right now. And then she finally gets to get into, I don't want to say easier literature, but it is going to be a little bit easier because it's a little more, you know, modern language and, you know, easier to kind of comprehend stories. Uh, so the main book for the next unit after the one she's on is Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. And... Oh, this is terrible. I know back in middle school, maybe like seventh grade, I had her read Jane Austen. And I can't remember if I had her read this or Sense and Sensibility. And I need to go back and look. Um, but either way, it's been several years. So uh, Pride and Prejudice is the main book. Now the honors book that they suggest is Persuasion. And that's a pretty short book. So we may very well actually be able to do both books for that. And then the unit after that is on Charles Dickens. So Great Expectations is the main book. And then Oliver Twist is the honors book. So now those are pretty decent length books. So I don't know if we're going to get to both of those. That might be a unit where we just do the main book and call it good. We'll see. And then I just want to share a couple of the topics and books that they're going to be getting into with their guest hollow courses. So Government and Econ... Uh, my daughter has finished up reading about like political parties and elections and things like that and they're getting into some of the other branches of government so she's going to be reading a book called the U.S. Senate and then on the economy, uh, economic side uh, they're getting ready to go into inflation a bit more so she has a book called Inflation, uh, What It Is, Why It's Bad and How to Fix It and then she's got this book that was that's I can't remember it's a few weeks out. Um, but it is They Called Us Enemy by George Takai. And it's actually a graphic novel about uh, the Japanese internment camps during World War II. So graphic novels aren't like her favorite type of book. So I don't know how much she'll like get into like this style of reading. But I think the story is definitely worth, worth reading for that one. Then once we get through that four week pause in food science where you know gives gets my son all caught up uh, they will be moving forward together from there and it looks like we're going to be getting into radioactivity because we've got a book called radioactive a tale of love and fallout and it's not so much like a like a standard book i don't know it's interesting it's got a bunch of really unique pictures and sketches and ways of showing things so that one could be different uh, they're going to do a book called Stuff Matters, exploring the marvelous materials that shape our man-made world. And then Pandora's Lunchbox, how processed food took over the American meal. And you guys know me, I like to read ahead the stuff that my kids are going to be reading. So I do have both of these books on my TBR for this month. Um, really interested in this one. Uh, I read that book, uh, Slow Death by Rubber Duck which just kind of freaked me out about everything. So I have a feeling that this is going to possibly adjust some of our grocery shopping habits a little bit. So kind of looking forward to seeing what that one has to say. And then let me grab some of my son's history books real quick. So the world history course from Guest Hollow does go in, you know, chronological order. And we spent quite a bit of time on the Romans and the Vikings and things like that. And we're kind of getting 
you know, creeping towards the Middle Ages a little bit at a time. But there are uh, a couple of chapters and books that are focused in on history in China. And there is a series called Understanding China Through Comics. And there's actually three books total um, that were recommended for the curriculum, like from this series. But the first ones he's going to get into are Division to Unification in Imperial China from the Three Kingdoms to the Tang Dynasty. And then the second one is Barbarians and the Birth of the Chinese Identity, the Five Dynasties and Ten Kingdoms. Uh, and of course, this one covers, you guessed it, the Mongols. So that just makes me think of John Green on Crash Course every time I see that and his Mongols montage. Always makes me laugh. But these are, again, graphic novels, which he enjoys reading. So I think that will be, whoops, these will be perfect for him. And then because again of where things fall on the timeline uh it's also going to be a point where he's going to read about the aztecs as well so this book is called fifth son a new history of the aztecs um it is a pretty it's a pretty wordy book i mean it's like tiny print lots of words this is not like a picture book uh, so i haven't looked ahead enough to see like if he's reading like full chapters of this or selected pages and whatnot uh, and I am going to, this one is also on my TBR for this month because um, I just thought it looked interesting. And so I'll get a feel for how this one reads. So those are just some of the things that they are doing for those courses. And then the last thing I wanna to touch on are our group subjects. So in quarter two, we did an awful lot related to like the holidays. So you guys know I put out the uh, Christmas Around the World uh, free unit study that I put together for my teenagers. Um, a lot of you asked for it and I sent that out to you and hopefully if you used it, that was helpful. So we did that during the holidays. We did our Advent study for Daily Grace Coat during the holidays. Uh, we kind of shifted gears a little bit when we were doing like our German and we focused on like Christmas vocabulary and Christmas themed books and things like that. So we just kind of, you know, enjoyed all of that. Uh, one thing that I was doing a little differently before the holidays was kind of blocking what we were doing in our group studies. So we cover quite a few subjects in our group studies. We do a Bible study uh, that just like a devotional Bible study. And then we have like a topical Bible study that's more like a semester long one that we do. Uh, we were introducing some curriculum from campfire curriculums. We started on the Titanic um, because that's what they wanted to do first instead of natural medicine. So we jumped in on the Titanic we do a read out loud and then we do German. So all of those things are covered during our group time. And what I wanted to do was have more time for like one particular subject at a time where we could just get really into it and get into the flow of it and not feel like, okay, we've done 20 minutes on this, we gotta stop so we can get this other thing in. So we ended up breaking it down to where like German was being done, like the devotional was every day, five days a week on the devotion, because those are you know, 10 minute devotions. And then three days a week, we would do a longer German lesson and then a little bit of the read out loud. And then the other two days we were doing our semester long Bible study and our campfire curriculum. I liked that. I liked what it allowed us to do with those subjects. Definitely gotta keep doing that. Definitely. So here's what we are continuing to work on in Q3. We are still slowly making our way through our read out loud. Slowly, very slowly. <laughs> This might be the last read out loud we do for the year and that's okay uh we are baby stepping through in the steps of the titanic this i don't know if this is going to be anything on the transcript or not it's just in interesting information that i wanted to share with my kids but we did finally 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 we finished our old testament study and if i sound a bit exasperated about that it's just because we actually started the old testament study last year and then we didn't get it done. Like we just kept taking extra time with it. And there's some long chapters of the Bible that you read with that. And then I thought, oh, well, we'll wrap it up at the first part of this year. And then we didn't. And it just felt like we were, we were on that forever. You know, sometimes it feels like you can be in a topic for just like too long. And I was just ready for a new topic, but you know, it's bound and determined we were gonna finish it. So we finished it, yay. Anyways, now we're on another one. This is a New Testament study. Uh, it says, For God so loved a study on the Gospel of John. So specifically focusing on the Gospel of John. Now, like I mentioned, like the first week back from Christmas, we did not 
get a chance to do any group work because I was sick. But the very first lesson of this, which I quite appreciated, talked about the difference between the four Gospels and what is it that makes John's Gospel different in terms of the writing techniques and the words he uses and the um, events that he chooses to write about and the way he writes about them. And, you know, if you sit back and you read, you know, say Matthew versus John, you start to see that. You start to see that obviously the author's writing techniques are vastly different. And so it was, you know, focusing in on like, so why are, is it that we're studying John out of the four gospels for this and what makes it a little bit different? Um, so that was an interesting introduction. And then we'll be diving into different topics um, along the way. So this should be a really good study to do. And I'm excited to be on, on that new one. And then we had finished the Advent study from Daily Grace Co. The next one I have up in the queue is Mercy in the Storm, a study on the book of Jonah. So I am rather interested on um, how it's going to approach the book of Jonah. Um, it's not a book of the Bible that I've, you know, particularly dove into in the past. Uh, so that should be interesting. And considering that I just finished a podcast series from the Bible Project, and they actually did like a whole podcast episode on the book of Jonah, which I thought was really interesting. You know, I learned a lot from that. So I'm going to be interested in seeing how like what I learned from that podcast kind of, you know, meshes with what we're going to cover in, in this. Can't wait to check this one out. I don't know which one we're going to do right after that. I have like four or five possible possible ones, but this one will take us the majority of quarter three. Okay, so hopefully that gave you a little bit of insight on how things are going with our different courses. Uh, again, if you'd like to see kind of how things went in quarter one or you want to see more detail on our curriculum choices, check those videos out down below in the playlist. How did your quarter two go? Was there anything that was like a big success or anything that was like, you know, ah, oh, the chaos is insane kind of moments? What kind of things might you be doing in quarter three? Are you doing anything different or continuing on or things going great for you? Just let me know how things are going for you so that way we can share some ideas back and forth and provide each other with encouragement. If you enjoy this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up before you go. And I do wanna mention there is something new now down in my description box. So I finally got an Amazon storefront set up and on there I have linked all kinds of things that are favorites of mine things that I've actually purchased and use in my home because I don't want to recommend anything that I haven't actually tested out. So links for all of the things that I use in my homeschool room, in our homeschool, my kitchen favorites, my baking favorites, my gardening favorites, all of that stuff will be down below. Uh, it's linked to the Amazon store and you can find all those things very easily. So I was super excited to finally get that all set up and be able to share that with you guys. As always, thanks so much for joining me for today's video. Appreciate you guys being here. Happy homeschooling. See you in the next one.